So here the activated CDA and the activated CD4 cells are in the mesenteric lymph nodes now, traveling from the pears patches, as well as the activated B cell. Now, if the antigen presenting cell, the dendritic cell, didn't activate the naive lymphocytes within the pears patches, it can all it can then leave the pears patches with the antigen on the major histocompatibility complex and also activate naive lymphocytes within the mesenteric lymph nodes. So dendritic cells can activate lymphocytes, naive lymphocytes within the pears patches, or it can activate lymphocytes within the mesenteric lymph nodes, basically. So if the dendritic cell were to enter the lymph, mesenteric lymph nodes via the afferent lymphatic vessel, it will activate the naive CD8 and the naive CD4 T cells here and convert retinol to retionic acid in the process. And remember what retionic acid does? Well, the retionic acid production allows dendritic cells to induce expression of homing receptors on these lymphocytes. And remember, homing receptors basically tells where, where these lymphocytes have to go. Next. So what are these homing receptors called? Well, the lymphocytes express homing receptors integrin alpha 4, beta 7, and also CCR9. However, this can also, the integrin can also be different depending on which location it has to go. But this is typically it, integrin alpha 4, beta 7, and CCR9. And the homing receptors are expressed following lymphocyte activation by dendritic cells or antigen-presenting cells. The naive B cells can then be activated by the CD4, activated CD4 cell, which is a T helper cell. Once the B cell is activated by the T helper cell, the B cell will begin maturing and will begin class switching, meaning that it will class switch from IgM antibodies and begin expressing IgA antibodies. And remember, IgA antibodies is important in the mucosal immune system. A particular T helper cell, the T helper 2 cells, secrete interleukin 5 and interleukin 6, which help stimulate the naive B cells to become IgA producing plasma cells. However, the plasma cells are not actually activated within the lymph nodes. They become activated plasma cells once they leave uh, the blood vessel or the lymphatic vessel into the tissues, the designated tissues, where the homing receptors will take them. So now we have an activated CD8, CD4 cell, and a yet-to-become plasma cell, leaving the mesenteric lymph nodes via the efferent lymphatic vessel. And they're going to go to where the homing receptors will take them. So again, the soon-to-be plasma cell uh, gets activated when the T helper 2 cells secrete interleukin 5 and interleukin 6, which causes a plasma cell to express IgA or um, make it be able to secrete IgA antibodies. But this usually happens in the tissues. So what is an IgA antibody? Well, an IgA antibodies are very important in the mucosal immune system. When they're in the mucosal immune system, when they are secreted by plasma cells, they are usually dimeric, meaning that they're secreted uh, two antibodies back, backside to backside. However, if IgA is secreted into the plasma, they're usually monomeric, meaning just one antibody. But because we're talking about the mucosal immune system, it's dimeric, such as this. And they're very important in preventing infection by either... Uh, neutralizing an antigen of a pathogen or bringing an antigen of pathogen outside of our body into the lumen to be secreted out as feces or, or whatever. So these lymphocytes in the plasma cells will travel through the lymphatic vessel and enter the heart, where once it enters the heart, the heart will pump these uh, immune cells out via the aorta. So now from the lymph vessel, it is in the bloodstream. Um, the lymphocytes and the plasma cells will travel via the bloodstream, and because it has the homing receptors, these integrin and the CCR9, it is able to bind to other receptors on the blood vessel walls, which allows the lymphocytes to move into the associated tissue. So here we have receptors underneath the lamina propria, or within the lamina propria, called MADCAM1 and CCL25. These receptors have affinity for the homing receptors on the T cells, for example, the integrin and the CCR9. 
So here we have a T helper cell, a CD4 cell, where the integrin binds to the MADCAM1, and the CCR9 is attracted to CCL25. And this allows for the cell to migrate across the endothelial cell into the lamina propria. Similarly, we have a CD8 cell here, a T killer cell, where the integrin has affinity for the MADCAM1 and the CCR9 is attracted to CCL25. Uh, B lymphoblasts also have this, the immature plasma cells. So this, this is not meant to be CCR7, it's meant to be CCR9. So essentially the integrin and the chemoreceptor CCR9 allows the T cells to move from the blood into the tissue. Now it should be also noted that not all mucosal surfaces express the same chemokines and receptors. And so this allows the recruitment of lymphocytes to different areas depending on the homing receptors, etc. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, the lymphocytes are not able to migrate through into the lamina propria because they have the appropriate receptors and chemoreceptors which have affinity and attraction for the receptor and chemokines from the lamina propria or within the blood vessel within the lamina propria. So here we have the immature or soon-to-be plasma cell migrate through. And when the and when this, this uh, B cell migrates through, it will become an activated plasma cell with the help of the T helper cell and it will express IgA antibodies which is the most important antibody within the mucosal system. The T cells will also migrate through the CD8 T cells and the CD4 T cells. The CD4 T cells being predominantly T helper cells and the CD8 T cells being T killer cells as well as T memory cells. Why do we have T memory cells within the lamina propria or within the mucosal system? They are actually very important and we actually have a lot of T memory cells within the lamina propria, for example. And this is because the mucosal immunity is continuously exposed to pathogens when we eat, when we, when we do whatever. And so that is why we need memory of those pathogens so that we can initiate uh, effective immune response ASAP. So most cells in the lamina propria are effector cells, such as T helper cells and also plasma cells, as well as memory cells. Within the lamina propria, there is actually more CD4 cells than CD8 cells, about a 3 to 1 ratio. And this is because we need CD4 cells to help uh, activate macrophages and promote its activity. And remember, we need T helper cells in order to activate or stimulate IgA producing plasma cells, which are very important. Now, there are also cells within the layer of the epithelial cell, the intraepithelial layer. And these are usually CD8 cells, T killer cells. These cells move within the layer of the epithelial because they actually express different homing receptors than the ones um, than the cell than the lymphocytes in the lamina propria. They express also CCR9, but they express different integrin, which is alpha E B7 integrin, which is slightly different to the alpha 4 B7 integrin on the lymphocytes within the lamina propria. So CD8 cells predominate in the epithelial layer and the CD4 cells predominate in the lamina propria. So why do, why is there an abundance of CD8 cells within the epithelial? Well, this is because they can kill infected cells very easily, the epithelial cells, if they are infected very easily. Because remember, the mucosal surfaces, the epithelials, are continuously exposed to pathogens, such as virus. And so if a virus infects an epithelial cell, the CD8 cell can kill it very quickly because it's right next to it. So let's look at how it does this. The effective function of intraepithelial lymphocytes, the CD8 T killer cells. So here we have the epithelial uh, lining, the mucosal epithelial lining, and here we have the lumen. And the CD8 cell resides right next to it. A virus comes along, let's just say, and it goes into the cell and essentially infects the cell, changes its genetic code. What happens next is that the infected cell will now express a major histocompatibility complex molecule with, the, with, the, with an antigen on it, telling the CD8 cell essentially to kill it. The CD8 cell, with no hesitation, will kill it. The T cell receptor will bind on the MHC 
and uh, and the CD8 uh, receptor will also bind to this as a co-receptor. And this will uh, tell the CD8 cell to essentially kill the infected cell. And that is how the CD8 cell protects uh, the mucosal uh, system from further infection. Dendritic cells also reside within the lamina propria and has a fundamental role in taking up antigen and presenting it to the lymphocytes, remember. So how the antigen presenting cells, such as the dendritic cells, acquire pathogens and antigens from the lamina propria is actually quite unclear, but there are a few mechanisms that are thought, um, that have been thought of. Remember that within the payus patches in the gut, the antigen in, is being brought in by the M cell, the microphote cell. In the lamina propria, there can be three different ways. There can be an FCRN dependent transport with the, where basically an antibody binds to the antigen and brings it into the lamina propria where the dendritic cell can then capture it. Or the dendritic cell itself can squeeze within the epithelial gaps and capture the antigen itself. Or alternatively, the pathogen or antigen infects the epithelial cell. And the epithelial cell will then uh, kill itself through apopto apoptosis, releasing the antigen. And now the dendritic cell can capture it. So those are the three ways where the dendritic cells can obtain an antigen. And now by ob obtaining an antigen, the dendritic cell is activated and and begins presenting it on an MHC class, class 2. And with this MHC class 2, it also begins expressing receptors, allowing it to move into the mesenteric lymph nodes. And this is the exact same process as we see with the dendritic cells from the payus patches. So now the activated dendritic cell from the lamina propria can travel to the mesenteric lymph node to activate the lymphocytes, the naive CD4 and naive CD8 T cells. The dendritic cell, as well as other cells within lamina propria, also has a fundamental role in regulating or stopping the activity of CD8 cells, the T-killer cells. Because without regulating their activity, the CD8 cells, the T-killer cells, will kill anything around it because they are T-killer cells. They kill things. And, so in the, so, and therefore, in the abs, absence of an antigen or a pathogen, dendritic cells, for example, secrete interleukin-10, which regulate or stop the actions of CD8 cell, keeping them at bay. Of course, the dendritic cells can secrete other interleukins, will also, which, which, which also stops the activity of CD8 cells, as well as there are other cells within the lamina propria which, which also regulate CD8 activity. But dendritic cells are usually the most uh, notable ones. And finally, as mentioned ages ago, the plasma cells secrete IgA dimeric antibodies and we'll talk about IgA dimeric antibodies at the very end of this video. Another very important thing to note is that we don't actually find neutrophils, the granulocytes, the neutrophils within the lamina propria and around the connective tissue layer or beneath the mucosa layer. And this is because neutrophils are very um, self-damaging and so they're usually found within the bloodstream. So neutrophils are not present in the uh, mucosal so associated lymphoid tissues, but they do come in during invasion, or they are recruited during invasion and infection because they're important in phagocytizing these antigens, pathogens.